So we've talked about EMQs, we've talked about critical analysis. Let's come to the modified essay question. So here, there are three types of questions that they would ask you. So they would say list, and this is really, really important uh, because often in the feedback you'll see, say, they'll say, and the same thing for OSCE, read the question. If it's list, it literally means you can give a bullet point list. If it's outlined, you need to provide a little bit of justification for that particular bullet point. Whilst described, obviously, is in more detail than that. So the reason why this is important is because if you need to complete the paper, you need the questions that have, you, you need to sort of stick to this particular format. Otherwise, if it says list and you end up describing, you've actually lost time. Okay? So that's a key point for the MEQ. So these are some of the questions that can come up. Um, and obviously there's, there's, there's loads of others, but this is the kind of the themes that you would get. Management in a medical ward of a patient following an overdose. Okay. So here, the, you can see the amount of scenarios that can come up. But it's a medical ward. It's an, you know, there's an overdose, so could there be a personality element? Do you need a one-to-one -one special? It's the immediate things that you would do. So they won't, you know, they may actually add on they keep adding on other layers to it. So they will say management and medical ward of a patient following overdose. This may be 18 year old female who's self harming, uh, wanting to leave the ward uh, and is uh, attempting to self harm on the ward. What would you uh, outline your approach to this particular scenario? Okay. So there are lots of things and think in the CanMeds model. It will help you because obviously the first important thing is risk management as part of the clinical bit. Because if, if this person self-harming, wanting to abscond, do you need to involve security? Do you need a one-on-one -on -one special? So what they want to know is not the, the, the theoretical kind of approach, because it's not asking you management or overdose. It's, saying, it's asking about the implementation, knows how. So what you've got to do when you're writing an MEQ is to put yourself in the situation and think about the literal steps that you will take. That's what the MEQ is, okay? Patient with multiple somatic complaints and opioid addiction. Again, a very common thing that's asked, okay? Because opioid addiction is not something that comes across, um, you know, the, in, in daily practice. Um, but you can see here, you know, multiple somatic complaints. Is this somatoform? Is this related to, uh, you know, organic disorders? Uh, is the opioid addiction, how much and that and pain is linked, we know. Um, so the question that they can ask is, they would add layers on, on top of that, okay? Medical officer dependent on sleeping tablets. You can see here it's not just about weaning the person off sleeping tablets, it's about how is it impacting their work, governance issues, reporting, all of those sort of things. Young female with eating disorder refusing to eat. Here again, physical risk becomes really important. So what are the bloods you need to do? What sort of setting you need to manage? Those sorts of things. So they might say, you're seeing a young female with eating disorder on a medical ward, different ball game as opposed to they say young female with eating disorder first presentation in referred by the GP different bit because what you do there as part of risk is you've got to take a pulse blood pressure and actually do a blood test if the pulse is less than 60 blood pressure is less than 90 by 60 potassium low ECG ab abnormal you've got to think about the ideal situation so you actually have access to all of it because that is the right thing to do so if I see someone with eating disorder, I actually look at at least their previous bloods or get a blood done straight away and an ECG and do their pulse and their blood pressure, especially the BMI sort of coming sort of along the 18.5 or lower or that sort of range, okay? Because you've got to think sometimes backwards. What happens if the, person, the, the patient left and actually collapsed and something happened? How have I... How would the legal aspect look? Wouldn't look very, very good, is it? Because clearly college guidelines, and there are new guidelines for eating disorder, they say indications for inpatient admission, part of it is linked to pulse, blood pressure, potassium, PCG, magnesium, phosphate, all of those. Plus you need to know magnesium, phosphate, potassium in advance, especially if they've got very low BMI. Why? Because of the refeeding syndrome risk that might come up. So that's the foreseeability aspect. So 
just admitting them to a general adult ward and them having just meals straight away, that's risky, they need to be monitored. So it's all of these things, that those details that examiners want to know. Because actually when you read an answer, you know the individual that has actually worked in that setting or knows this, as opposed to someone who is giving a generic answer. So stay away from the generic answers and think about exactly the issues that, that come up. Indigenous female recently lost a child presenting with hallucinations and depressive features. So you can see here the indigenous aspect will play a big part. In treatment of this, you know, you've got to take into account cultural issues, cultural aspects. Could this be a normal phenomenon of grief? So you may need to involve the multicultural mental health team, the indigenous mental health liaison worker. So that, that's where some of the marks, the important marks will be. Okay. So these are some examples of the modified essay question. Critical essay question, these are some of the questions that have come up earlier. As you can see, they give you a statement. But the statement, most of the statements that they give you have a kind of a dual um, sort of theme to it, where you can flip it on the side. And that's what you essentially have to do for the essay. So the days of the talking cure self-knowledge as a means of liberation are numbered. But the flip side is they're not numbered. And that's how you've got to think about then breaking the essay down. So what is the evidence for the fact that they're not numbered? What is the evidence for the fact that they're numbered? And what are the other, you know, is, is there a political aspect to this? Is there a cultural aspect to this? Is there a social aspect to this? What's the clinical aspect? So that's the kind of approach that you would take for the essays. Next one, it must be recognized by mental health professionals that consumers of mental health services know more than anyone else about what is needed in the planning, development, and management of the care. Can you see that it's, it's sort of always an absolutistic sort of statement. So what you've got to do is break that down and provide pros and cons. Does that make sense? That's the kind of statements that they give, very absolutistic. So psychiatric taxonomies, always a little uncertain, are most confused and illogical. You can see very strong words. So you kind of have to moderate that in your essay and provide pros and cons. So what is the evidence for the illogicality? So in the essay, you're writing a lot of on the one hand, on the other hand. That's what the essays are expecting. Balancing pros, cons, or on the one hand, on the other hand, although, however. So there's a list of words that you have to, um, to know to provide that. And what we do for the critical essay training is actually provide you with a whole list of those, those sort of words when they endeavor to encompass the moral and legal aspects of human behavior. Okay? So there are a number of themes that would, that would come up here. But my tip for the critical essay would be, start watching Q&A. It's really one of the best, best ways of thinking about themes for the essay. Because they cover such broad themes, and you can always ask the question, well, how is this relevant to mental health? And it doesn't always have to be relevant, particularly to your clinical bit, but it, there are so many things that you can always bring in from, from the discussions that come there, people's perspectives. And remember, you can talk about quotes. Obviously, you don't need to know the quotes, but what you can, there's a way of actually putting forward what the person might have said. Okay, so that, those are some things that you can put forward in the essay, according to X. You, you write the sentence. We do, not we do not practice what we investigate and we do not investigate what we practice. And you can, you can see here, it's a broad bit. You can come up with any sort of theme here. Okay, so that's the essay. And for essays, start reading um, editorials. So even if you just stick to one journal, such as the ANZ at JP, and the editorials at the beginning are really, really useful to read. And we've, I'll, I'll provide some, some links uh, on the website that we have, but what I did was actually had a book where when I read articles, I would take certain themes that I liked and actually wrote them down. Diverse themes. And before the exam, all I did, so I ended up with a book with just lots of themes. For the exam, all I did was read those. And that really helps if, you, if you're going to write articles in the future. Um, but at the same time, because you've written it, you know, there's something different about writing 
as opposed to typing. And we know that from an evolutionary perspective. There's an article written about it as well. So writing those things does lead to sort of this osmosis. So if you're reading an article and you like certain themes or you like the way sentences are written, then write them down. Because that book at the end will become really valuable. You don't have to read the whole article, but you've got so many nice themes. And invariably, you're able to use them in the, in the essay. Okay? So I've actually made a list of articles which I'll, I'll give you. Even if you just read those three or four times, there's so much information. So, for example, you know, there's, there are a couple of articles that are absolute must-reads. So the article by Kendall that talks about mental illness and its dichotomy. You must know about the mind-body dichotomy because literally, you know, take the previous questions. You know, mental health professionals, psychiatric taxonomies. You know, how is the psychiatric taxonomy different from the taxonomy of medical disorders? And that's why knowing the mind-body dichotomy becomes so important. And his article is absolutely, you know, a, a must-know.